If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know that Cura has been my go-to slicer for the past three or four years, and we've covered quite a few different videos on various tips or tricks on the different features that are available in Cura, and we still have a very long way to go as things are added all the time and there's just a lot of other things that I'd like to dive further into. Well, more so over this past year, very heavily, I've gotten a lot of requests to check out Prusa Slicer and maybe cover some of the different features and capabilities of that slicer. And over the past few months here, I have been playing around a bit with the Prusa Slicer. Well, Prusa recently announced that starting in their 2.4 version of the Prusa Slicer, they have a new feature called multi-material painting. And what that does is it allows you to take any single extrusion model and convert it to a dual extrusion model or even a multicolor model if you've got some kind of a multi-material or multicolor setup. And in theory, you should be able to take that and even use it to make a certain part of a model a specific material and another part of the model a different material, again, if you have some kind of a printer that would allow you to do so. Now this feature is somewhat similar to the mosaic canvas painting feature that has been out for some time, I think maybe even a couple years at this point, but the key difference is that the mosaic palette, which is mosaic's product, it's a standalone peripheral that allows you to convert your printer into a multi-material printer of sorts, their slicer only works with that unit, while Prusa Slicer and this new multi-material painting feature will work with any 3D printer, as long as your 3D printer doesn't take a proprietary file type and your printer is not limited to a specific slicer. If your printer can use the Prusa Slicer, then you have full access to this very, very awesome tool. So in today's video, we are going to be diving into this functionality. I'll take you through how to set it up. I will take you through what each and every single one of the tools do so that you have a better understanding of how to actually use this. And of course, we will take some models, we will use this painting feature, and we will print them out. I am very, very excited. So without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. As mentioned, this new multi-material painting feature is available starting in Prusa Slicer 2.4, and at the time of recording this is in Alpha 3 or its third version. From my testing, this build seems very stable, and I ran into no issues at all in my time of using. The release does state that the profiles you create with the Alpha will be saved in an Alpha folder, so you don't need to worry about any issues running this side by side with the latest full release. So, of course, the first thing you will need to do is download and install this version of Prusa Slicer. I'll have a link in the description to the GitHub page where you can download it. The only other prerequisite is that your printer has at least two extruders or tool heads. The multi-material feature can work for up to 16 extruders, which is insane, but the iFast being a dual extrusion machine, I will set the number of extruders to two. Once you have 2.4 installed and the number of extruders set, we will of course need to import a model that we can paint. For this, since it is getting close to Halloween, I'm going to download the Brute Pumpkin from Chaos Cortex Things page. I'll place links in the description to any models used in this video in case you want to print them out for yourself or just follow along. After importing your model and making sure you click it to select it, you'll see the multi-material painting function on the bottom of the left sidebar. Selecting that will take you into painting mode and will pop up the painting menu. Left clicking will paint or select things for extruder one and right clicking will be for extruder number two. For anyone with more than two extruders, the drop down menu will let you cycle to whichever extruder you want to make active. Holding shift while using the left mouse button will act as an eraser tool. You can choose any color to paint the model, which is great for getting a visual of how the part would look if you print it in those colors. Now let's work our way through the different tools. The first tool type is the brush tool. Once selected, you'll have a few options under brush shape, which are sphere, circle, and pointer. The sphere and circle are very similar, with the main difference being that the sphere will paint all facets inside of your brush tool, no matter the orientation while the circle tool will ignore facets facing away from the camera. You can use them for most of the same things, but the circle tool will give you finer control of what is being painted. 
You can also adjust the brush size from a small 0.4 to a large 8 millimeters. The split triangle checkbox is great as it will split facets in half, giving you finer control of painting. For larger models, you may want to uncheck it, but for everything I did, I prefer to have it enabled. The last brush shape is the pointer tool, which is awesome because it highlights each facet and allows you to either single click or click and drag to use. I found this to be the best tool for getting a very precise outline of a part before using a different brush tool to fill it in. The next tool type is the Smart Fill, which is what I use the most and is an incredibly powerful tool. This tool allows you to paint an entire face or part with just one click. When you mouse over a certain part of the model, it will highlight the area that it will fill in if you click with that Smart Fill. The only setting for this is the Smart Fill Angle, and a great way to think about it is how sensitive do you want the tool to be. An object that has parts which are very steep may work well with a lower sensitivity, but if the part you are wanting to paint is not as steep or defined, you may need to increase or decrease that smart fill angle. On the Brute Pumpkin model example, I wanted to paint the sides of the eyes as well as the teeth. The default 30 degree worked perfectly for the eyes and all the teeth but one. For that final tooth, all I had to do was decrease that value to 25 and I was able to see it highlighted and quickly fill it in. The final tool is going to be the bucket tool, which is used to paint neighboring facets with the same color. This tool is really just to swap colors around, and I see it primarily for those that are going to be using a multi-extrusion setup. The best workflow that I found was to start out with the smart fill and then go to the brushes for any cleanup that might be needed, or if there's a scenario where the smart fill just isn't able to capture that specific face or part that you'd like to paint. The painting feature works incredibly well, and I tested it out on the Brute Pumpkin, as well as the Bulbasaur model from Chaos Cortex, which will also be linked in the description. These tools are super simple to use and an incredible advancement for dual or multi-material printing. There may be some instances where the painting tool doesn't work exactly the way you want it to with shallow faces or just specific geometries. I tried painting the skull and crossbones on the poison bottle model and when I looked at the g-code I did discover it was adding some artifacts that would have painted the model incorrectly at least not according to what I wanted. This seems to not be the case with most models but I do think that it's a good idea to do a quick check of the g-code after slicing just to make sure every Everything is still looking correct before sending off a large multi-color or multi-material print to be printed. The last thing I did want to note is that this doesn't actually split up the model into multiple STLs, meaning once you paint it, you can't export this model into a different slicer such as like Cura. It won't carry over what has been painted in the form of multiple STLs or bodies, and you will need to slice the file in Prusa Slicer. Luckily, as long as your printer is not locked into a proprietary file type or slicer, just about any printer that takes standard G-code will work fine with Prusa Slicer. And that has been a run through of the Prusa multi-material painting feature that was just again recently added in 2.4 moving forward. I am very excited. Although the alpha release has been very stable and worked perfectly well for me, I'm excited for it to be in a full release as like I said, I think this opens up a world of possibility for what you can do with a dual or multi extrusion machine. And I am very much so looking forward to diving further in. If you do get a chance to try out this feature on your you know, dual or multi-material setup, let me know in the comments down below what your experience is like. And if you have any feature requests or anything at all for this that you would like to see as well, place those in the comments down below as well. Prusa is definitely known to listen and take community feedback. And so perhaps if we make enough noise about a specific tool, it will make it into their development cycle and we might see it added into a future release of this, uh, of this slicer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week, spending more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.